onto the bench, folks. This man here, talk about a philanthropist. I tell you, folks, and he's half Kenyan, half Nigerian, lives in Toronto, Canada. Recently was appointed vice chairman before he was the president of the Toronto Raptors. So now he's both vice chairman and president of the Toronto Rap Raptors, the NBA franchise, the winners back in 2019. He's going to talk to us about a new announcement that he, a company he co-founded called Giants of Africa to build a hundred, yes, a hundred basketball courts across Africa. Starting with Kenya this week, one in Korogosho, one in Samburu. Others will be in Tanzania, Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, of course, Nigeria, and many, many more. Masai Ujiri is my guest tonight. Good to see you, brother. Welcome back to Nairobi. Great to see you, brother. You're yeah. looking good, man. You look great, man. I like the green tie. <laughs> <laughs> the banking tie. I know. It went very well with the bank. <laughs> How you been, man? It's been a couple of years since uh, we last spoke, huh? Yes. Oh, when we speak online, but uh, since we last spoke face to face. Yes, we've been hanging there. You know how it's been. Yeah. Uh, everybody's trying to get through uh, the last couple of years, now getting back at it and keep hearing there's different things coming, you know, um, variants and all of that. But um, you know what? We have to be bold a little bit and try to get out of this and get back to, you know, some sort of normal life yeah. a little bit and it was a priority for me to come it's the second time back in the continent now i came for the ball mm -hmm. uh, but um, back again now it's great to be in nairobi yeah great it's, to be it's great to have you back and you know i just saw the commitment just today this press release was done today 100 basketball courts across the continent yes yes it, uh, honestly jeff it, at some point uh, for me, we're doing the basketball camps, we're teaching life skills, we're um, uh, teaching these kids career, you know, uh, pathways, moves. Uh, at some point, we have to invest in, in infrastructure, uh, which is what we need to do on the continent. And it's, it's a priority for me, it's an obligation uh, now that I feel um, we have to start building. Uh, we really have to start building. During COVID, couldn't come to do the camps. Um, uh, because all of, obviously because of um, uh, travel restrictions and all of that. We decided to build during COVID and use little funds we had um, to start building these courts, you know, like and more power to a couple of the construction companies we used, Joseph Art here, Weber in Nigeria, Sport Court, shipping things, you know, and uh, we managed to get 10 of them uh, done and we hope to continue that uh, momentum because the youth need uh, these facilities and need these courts to play. Yeah, look, um, it's, uh, the obvious question here is, I mean, that's about $30 million. In our currency, here's like 3 billion shillings. Hmm. That's a lot of money. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's something that we have to commit to. Yeah, we, um, uh, as I always said, we see um, the arena President Kagame built uh, in, in Rwanda and now you see what it's generating right um, and even though these are just courts it's going to generate a lot of events a lot of little things in the community that are going to help people young youth grow interact with each other and we need these you know um, I'm hoping that uh, this can inspire and this can hopefully lead to even more arenas like what uh, President Kagame has done uh, to be built all over the continent, you know, because it's it's so important. Um, this is charity um, that we're that we're doing with Giants of Africa. But as Jeff, you know, I saw you doing the football. There's a huge side um, of of business in sports that we in Africa need to recognize, you know, like, and we need to expand our minds there. Absolutely. I'll get back to the courts in a little short while and the ones that you are um, going to open this week, right? There's two in Kenya. Yes. Uh, 2019 was a huge year for the Raptors. Huge. Last time we spoke and you brought me a T-shirt. I remember that. I still have it. I still have it. It's framed <laughs> <laughs> with an NBA champions of 2019. Then 2020, the world was put on pause. Mm -hmm. It was a tough year. I mean, you know, sending your team to something called the bubble 
it was a tough transition year, wasn't it? Yes. Has it been difficult rebuilding from that? Yes. So we went into the bubble and that was every NBA team. Um, obviously, um, spent three months in there and honestly, it was, when you look back, it was quite a remarkable experience just being in this space. And I, I hate to compare it to prison, you know, like, but um, we were playing basketball and that's a gift that God has given us that we were able to, uh, to do this. But just being in that space and all you do is just go eat, go to the court, test every day, a couple, all those routines. And then you're competing, you're staying on different floors with different teams. And um, I remember being, uh, on, I think we were on the eighth floor and the Clippers were on the, on the um, seventh floor. I'd work out uh, every morning, uh, very early at five o'clock in the morning. I did not know that Kawhi Leonard was with on the, in the room below me and I'd be stomping <laughs> on, on the room, but we, everything was so close, closely knit, you know, and it, got, it gave us a chance to really um, look at life in a, in a different way. We came back after the bubble and the following season, unfortunately for Toronto, because we're in Canada, it's a whole different animal of crossing borders. Um, we had to go play somewhere else. And that really took a toll on our team. And we are actually very happy now to be coming back to Toronto and playing in Toronto this season. The preseason starts in a couple of weeks here and we're excited about that. Okay, and, and I saw a press conference which you gave last month and you said the crowds are coming back. You're gonna be playing in Toronto. Yes. You're not going anywhere else. No. And obviously for home games, it'll be Toronto. Yes, we are, we are we're super excited about this because honestly, um, and Jeff, you go play in another city, you don't really have the support. A lot of people come to buy tickets and, and they come to watch their favorite players. They don't come to always watch you play. People want to see LeBron. People want to see Steph Curry. People want to see the Boston Celtics. So it wasn't our real fans. And there's a huge excitement now about getting us back in Toronto and playing. We have a young team now coming back. That vibrant, diverse you know, community that we have and we felt. We really miss that and that's why we can't take anything for granted in what we do because it's, it's amazing what we have. Yeah, across the border, and I'm talking about in America, uh, the crowds are coming back mm -hmm. to the baseball stadium, basketball courts, they're coming back. Mm -hmm. Is that the same in Canada? Are the crowds coming? Are they raring to go? Yes. Is life coming back to some kind of normalcy? Yes, I think Canada did a great job. It, it was tough for Canadians in the beginning because we were, people were locked at home, you know, there, and there were very, very strict rules of non-movement, uh, but the combination of the lockdown a combination of um, vaccines needed to come into the country. Uh, I, I think it all has really like worked out well. Um, and now um, I think there's a high, really high percentage of people that have taken the vaccines. Um, people are open to that, which is going to help, you know, like in fighting uh, this virus as we continue through these tough times. Yeah. yeah, that's taking a while here, by the way, va getting the vaccines to the people. Yes, that's taking a while. Does that worry you? It does. It does. It doesn't. Uh, as a person, you know, like it worries me for the continent. You know, like I don't go around being scared, but, but because I'm coming here, I'm coming home. Yeah, so I don't, I don't feel that, you know, like, um, but um, I worry for the continent, you know, like I worry that um, the uh, sometimes the Western world does not. Um, give as much as they should and pay attention as much as they should uh, to the continent, especially with um, the vaccines. It's, it's, um, we should have more than um, what is on the continent right now. Yeah. Mm. Um, you lost one of your greatest players. Your team, Kyle Lowry. Yes. You lost one of, one of I mean, how's that, is it going to be difficult rebuilding? Yes, it, it is, it is. And it, it came a time, you know, like where you, you see the team starting to level out, you know, like a little bit and um, you, you kind of have to make those uh, decisions. But this was a decision that um, where we sat down with Kyle Lowry and he was good, um, you know, with it. He's legendary, you know, like with what they won a championship as, brought us to a certain level of um, incredible, incredible exposure and performance. Um, great competitor, 
unbelievable family person, you know, like um, that just rose um, tough times and turned them into incredible um, moments. And um, we will honor him in every way and wish him all the best. With sports comes a time when you have to kind of rebuild in some kind of way and start with young players again when you level out. That's where we got to, and we're, we're ready for another chapter in some kind of way. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, your commitment to the, to the African continent is uh, obvious. But when you see a player like the one they call the Greek freak, Giannis Atetokounmpo, voted the MVP of the NBA Finals last year, who's got African roots, obviously. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel? Uh, I, I, you have no idea. Incredibly, incredibly proud. And he's a proud African, you know, like I know Greek, Greece is where he grew up, you know, um, but um, I've had the um, uh, honor to, uh, to be close to Yanis and close to his family. Um, he, he, incredible family, incredible kid, um, works so hard. Um, I not really allowed to talk about other teams players in these in this way but honestly like I'm comfortable with all the African kids you know like and the kids that I'm close to and um, he's, he's he's just um, he's phenomenal to see him do that you know like um, I'm proud of them I know the owners of the team in Milwaukee very well too um, and um, just proud of you know a small market team him you know willing to stay in his in his um, uh, in that city and do it you know like um, that's that's really um, uh, putting your mouth you know like where the money is Absolutely. right yeah when you see him do you see other Yanises out there are they on the continent when you travel around Africa are there others like him we're well, hoping, uh, and I know they are, you know, um, and that's why infrastructure is really important to us, uh, Jeff, because you look at the talent on the continent, it is incredible. Look at football, look at music, look at comedy, look at food, look at your business. Yeah, incredible, incredible talent. The continent should be proud, we should be proud, and we should keep moving. Yeah, because we, we really have to encourage this youth and this generation yeah, because um, there is so much talent and we lack the infrastructure that can grow them in sports. Uh, I tell this story all the time. My mom always used to say to me, you know, like, hey, is this basketball going to feed you? Is this basketball going to feed you? And um, yes, it's feeding me now. Yeah, like uh, sports is not is is one of those things now that we need to take serious on the continent. We do. Yeah, it creates jobs. Yeah, there's so much opportunity there. Yeah, it relieves our minds. We send all these football players. I, I think Jeff, you would know this. There's more Premier League um, fans on the continent. Oh, yeah. Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester, yeah. and more Arsenal. Arsenal. Yes. More fans in Africa uh, than there is in the rest of the world. Yeah. yeah. And then we have all these players uh, playing in all these leagues. When are we building our own leagues? And that's why I'm proud of the NBA because of the Bar League that they've ex um, established now and is going to grow. What Amadou Fall and Victor Adam Silver are doing, it's going to grow to be something bigger. Yeah, and we can play in our own leagues, create more jobs yeah, for more Africans here. Yeah, and it's so important for us. Is that why you keep coming back? Because you have faith? Because you know, there's some people who would say, you know what, okay, throw some money at a project and they forget about it. Mm -hmm. You keep coming back. Uh, this is home. Yeah, this is home. I come to Nairobi's home. I go to Kigali's home. I go to Lagos's home. I go to Dakar, it, it's Africa, there's something about this continent, you know, like that needs to keep moving. Yeah, that needs to keep moving. We're not going to, um, yeah, we're not going to be an experiment anymore. Yeah, we have to be proud of who we are, right? And recognize that this talent we do have, and we elderly, we uh, have to give this opportunity to the youth. If we don't think that way, yeah, and we live in the old ways. We don't evolve. We have to evolve. Yeah, we have to be visionaries here. Yeah, and that's why a lot of places are progressing. 
Uh, we have to be that, Jeff. If not, you know, like we will stand still. It's an obligation for me in sports yeah, because um, I can't sit down in Toronto and just call myself uh, president or, uh, and look at the continent. I have to come and perform, do, and not talk. Yeah, we have to do it. I guess what I'm get, trying to get at, Masai, is the commitment that you have. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and again, you know, there's so much corruption on the continent, but there's corruption everywhere. Mm -hmm. How do you know you're not throwing good money after bad? Yeah, I don't think so, you know, because I think when I look at myself as a youth, when I was growing up, um, you just wanted shoes. You just wanted, and if I can do it, I grew up in northern Nigeria. So many smart kids you see around the continent, and they have more access than we did. Yeah, they have these phones. They can do many things online. Yeah, they can network in so many ways. Yes, and we need to instill that in them, you know, like they, we have to show more passion, you know, like that ambition. We have to keep growing, you know, we have to keep evolving. And yeah, I, when we worry about the negative to me, um, Jeff, which sometimes we do a little bit too much on the continent, uh, tribalism, all these things that are coming to what we do, yeah, it's unnecessary because the continent is so big and there's a space for all of us. Yeah, there's a space for everybody. Yeah, look at your story. Yeah, you left, came back, look at what you're doing on, in your country. Yeah, well, all of us can do this with determination and a little softness in our heart that we can help each other. Yeah, instead of hurting each other or instead of blocking the way for another person. Yeah, do you know how much this continent can progress? Uh, we have to keep doing, and I will never stop coming back. Never, I will never ever stop coming back here. It's, it's just not, it's, it's not, this is who I am as a person. Yeah. yeah, but being president of the Toronto Raptors and now recently vice chairman, yeah. uh, that's, a, you know, that's a lot of responsibility mm -hmm. on that side of the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. You gonna have time to come? Of course, yeah, that, that, those titles mean that we have to do more. Yeah, that's, that, that's how it resonates to me. Yeah, and that's how I actually um, describe it to people over there. Yeah, that, yeah, as we get better at this, we have to see the continent too. Uh, I want African players on our team. I want them to grow uh, in the league. I think the league has done an incredible job opening it up, you know, like to international foreign players. They are growing, they're becoming better. Yanis, Lucas, Embiid, Pascal, they're everywhere doing good things. Uh, we need to tell more of these stories, you know, like as, as we go. We Africans need to follow more. But most important, Jeff, we need to look at our continent. Yeah, we look to look at our continent. Yeah, why is, why is there no arena in Kenya? You know, like, why is there no arena in Nigeria? Why is there no arena in a lot of these places? Yeah, these arenas can create so many jobs, right? I said it the last time I was here. Yeah, we have, we have, to, we have to think that way. Sports will, will evolve even more. More events will come here. Yeah, more people here, more exposure to the beautiful city that Nairobi is. Yeah, mm. absolutely. You know, when we were growing up, I think a little before your time, when we were watching the NBA as kids, there was only one African that we knew. Mm -hmm. They called him Akeem the Dream Olajuwon. Remember? Yes. Houston Rockets? Yes. It was just one. Yes. An unbelievable person that I can call a friend. I actually spoke to him like a few days ago. Mm. Yeah, he, he created this path for us. Yeah, right? By what he did at that time. Uh, and sometimes it makes me mad that Hakeem Olajuwon and Dikembe Mutombo did not play, and Manute Ball too, did not play in this era. Because if they did, imagine the movement they would have created. Yeah, Hakeem, he was a ballerina. Yeah, he was incredible, you know, like and a soft mind, soft, great heart um, uh, of a person. and. Um, we need this, we need that path to be created for this youth. And that's what all of us should try to do, yeah. you know, to create for them because those guys created for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Masai, I want to take a break, come back and talk about um, the two courts mm -hmm. that you're going to uh, uh, open uh, in Nairobi yes. and in Samburu, right? Yes. yes. And also others across the continent. And also your, your vision 
going forward for this cause? What is it? Mm -hmm. By the way, I just got a message from um, someone who came up to the plane. I think he flew with you from the States. Uh, and he came and said hello. He's a senator from Nairobi County. Yes. Do you remember? Yes, I do. Name is Johnson Sakaja? Yes, Sakaja. Yeah, he says hi. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> mm. We're here with the vice chairman and president of the Toronto Raptors. Hey, by the way, his mother's from Ukambani. You know where that is? Somewhere in Machakos. Machakos. Yeah, okay. <laughs> his father's Nigerian. He lives in Canada, but his heart is solidly here in the continent. Look at the things he's doing. I'll tell you folks, this is philanthropy at its best. Better take a break. Keep tweeting at Koinangi Jeff at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag JK Live. JK Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment.